right, but joining me now, general manager of the Utah Jazz, live from Orlando in the bubble. He is Justin Zanuck on the drive. Jay-Z, what's good, man? How are you? Hey, Spence. I'm good. How are you? Doing well. So, um, you know, we had the Zoom call yesterday and obviously heard some things you had to say there. But for our listeners that may not have heard that, set the scene for us, man. What is it like down there right now? Well, I, they just let me out of quarantine about an hour ago. So it was the first time I got to go outside in about uh, just under 48 hours, 42, 43. Um, it's really hot down here. <laughs> I took a walk for about 15 minutes. Um, immediately went and got tested. We have daily testing down here, which the NBA has been very, very efficient um, in terms of the logistics and getting everybody in the right places and communicating. So what they're pulling off here is pretty unprecedented, and it's been a good start so far as far as getting everybody down here and knowing where we need to be and and, uh, taking care of us. So we actually have our first practice finally uh, in about one hour, in about 5 o'clock. So I'm interested to – that'll be the first time that all of us can be together as a group and uh, almost like the first day of training camp. Well, l- like. Last we heard, Jay-Z, um, you guys had been tested and there were no positive tests. Everyone came back negative. Is that still the case? Yep. Yep. Right, uh, good. We had to do every other day testing prior. I think it's, that started on June 23rd. So every other day since the 23rd, we've been testing in Salt Lake up until we left. And then uh, once we arrived here, July 7th, we were, were tested daily. And, uh, yeah, no uh, no positives. You know, the theme on the show over the past little bit um, and everybody that we've, ta- that we've spoken with in the league and media members and such is confidence level that you're going to finish this thing. And it looks like it's going to start. I mean, you're there and – you know, and we'll know in three weeks whether or not the games are going to be played. But is is there a consensus type feeling among folks down there that you're going to be able to see this see this thing through? I mean, we're all just trying to do the best we can to get by every day. You know. Sure, and I think the NBA has been, you know, at least internally too, been hey, we're going to get through this day by day, but we're going to plan the heck out of this to make sure everyone feels safe. It's very player centric. It's very it's safe and health first and foremost for everyone that's down here. And I think you can really feel that with the security, the testing um, in and out to keep everybody uh, isolated, meaning among themselves that have been tested, but still with with plenty of things and space around here. Um, Obviously, we just got out of quarantine about an hour ago. So I, as I said on the Zoom call yesterday, I'm not prepared to give any reviews of the campus or anything yet. I haven't seen any of it, but I think the the NBA has given themselves a chance and us a chance to finish this thing um, because of all the safety protocols and how much time that they spent on it, especially the science. David Weiss and his team at the NBA has done an unbelievable job of ed- not only educating all of us, but um, putting these steps in place. That I, I, I mean, me personally, I can only speak for myself, but I feel extremely safe down here. Well, that, that's, and then if we all feel safe and continue to do that, then we can all go and do our jobs. No, that's great to hear uh, because, look, nobody wants uh, the games played more than I do. I miss it for sure. I've, I'm sick of watching reruns of the finals from 1997. I want to see some live basketball, man. Me so I, I'm, I'm me glad too. to hear that. Jay-Z, t- take me into your locker room. Tell me how the spirit of the team is right now. It's no secret to anybody that it's been a rough few months, uh, specifically as it pertains to Donovan and Rudy and – Tim McMahon comes out with a story um, yeah, on Tuesday, and Tim joined my program, and we talked a lot about it. And it's really been topically some content that has that has been discussed at nauseum here and elsewhere. How would you best articulate the state of your locker room, the spirit of your locker room, and specifically Donovan and Rudy, that relationship currently today, right now? Look, I the excitement. I mean, one, this is this has been going since we've been. Uh, We've had this hiatus going on, what, three, four months now, and a lack of basketball to write about and lots of speculation. And I know that there were lots of comments out there about what was said publicly or what was not said publicly. And the whole point of it is, is when people have a chance to be able to be together and and have perspective on such a new time, these last three or four months, think about how much we didn't know about a pandemic or our place in the NBA or whether things were going to finish 
three or four months ago as opposed to what we know now. Perspective and time, you know, takes care of a lot of things. And, and right now our guys, at least from my view, are really excited to, one, be able to be together. Um, they haven't seen each other in person as a group. Uh, today, tonight will be the first time. Uh, other than phone calls and Zoom meetings and Zoom workouts and conversations. So for them to get back to doing what they love, I think there's a real excitement there. As far as, you know, Donovan and Rudy, they've said their their pieces. And I think a lot, you know, a large part of this is just us being back together and having a chance to go and compete. They're both competitors. Our team is made up of a bunch of highly intelligent and guys that play for each other, including Donovan and Rudy. And so getting back that feeling, I think one there's a chance that we can do that quickly. And two, there's a real intent for this group to, to do that. And I'm excited to see what we do down here in Orlando. I do agree. And one of the dynamics I've been screaming about is look, it's just like, if you've ever been in a text fight with your wife or girlfriend, you understand that context is impossible via text or even via zoom. In my opinion, it's, you have to get face to face and let's have a conversation and let's, uh, let's be adults and grownups about it. Uh, and so I've been screaming about that certainly since all this went down. But I do want to ask you, Jay-Z, your reaction to the athletic report by Shams and Tony that quoted a source that said the relationship is not salvageable. Yeah. It's an unnamed source and it's somebody's opinion. It could be 300, 500, who, who knows who it is. Um, people are going to say what they want to say. I think actions on the court, um, their relationship that they've publicly acknowledged and worked on i think that speaks for itself so anybody else's opinion really doesn't matter fair enough um big loss for you guys boyan has played so well and you won't have him unfortunately uh what does that what does that loss look like you know behind closed doors is the conversations you have with your staff and quinn and his staff how do you fill such a massive hole jay-z at times he was your best in my estimation your best offensive threat a lot of people say second or third. At times this year, I thought he was at the top of the pyramid. Uh, how are you guys going to compensate for such a big loss? Whether you stack it up, you know, one, two, three, first, second, or whatever option is, he's a really good player and a really important part of what we do. And uh, obviously there's not going to be a one-for-one one replacement in, you know, his usage, his shots, uh, his minutes. Um, but we have a capable group that will – you know, fill that gap and a, a very talented coaching staff to figure out, you know, where those possessions get used. And it's a chance to, for our team to, you know, for us to see a, a little bit different of a team. Um, Boyan's making great progress uh, with his recovery. And, you know, all anticipation is that he will be at full strength at the beginning of the next year. So that's always good. And this is a chance for these guys to, you know, sort of next man up and, and see what happens. And I'm excited with what Q and the, and the staff have dreamed up for that. The yep. biggest thing is I think we've done a really good job to the extent that we're allowed. And we mentioned this yesterday, Dennis and I, but um, the conditioning and, and their work to the extent that they were allowed to work, I think is at a high level. So that's going to allow us to quickly get back into what we do well. And uh, Quinn figuring out those rotations and, and play style of, you know, how, we, how we're going to replace Boya. You know, I have often attributed this quote to you when we had you on last fall because I had never considered it in the context in which you surrounded it when you said Rudy is the most unselfish player in the league. And the more and more I thought about it, the more and more it made sense. All he does on defense is clean up mistakes, and all he does on offense is set screens to get guys open. Now, you can count me in the camp that doesn't believe Rudy needs the ball more. I don't think it's conducive to – uh, uh, an efficient offensive attack. We know that when he sets the screen and rolls and finishes, he's elite. Uh, but other than that, I, I am not in that camp. Uh, Tim McMahon's piece quoted Rudy with some really self-aware things, I thought, which you know indicates some growth, but also talking about how he would like to be involved in the offense more. What are your thoughts? I think every player you know, that has pride in a competitive fire like Rudy – uh, always want to find opportunities to get better and to show that. I agree with you on the article. Tim did a very good job, but Rudy was uh, – Dennis made some comments yesterday about how self-aware he was at the age of 28, which I think is remarkable and shows – you know, we've seen Rudy grow up. This entire community has since he was 21 years old. And uh, to see his growth, that doesn't mean that 
he's reached his peak. And I think for him, he always wants to find ways to get better. And that doesn't always happen in a linear path. It always it doesn't happen in completely always improving all the time. Sometimes there's two steps ahead and one step back as you figure out your role with what your team needs you to do to win and how you can improve. And all of that stuff comes with from Rudy at the part of being a competitor first and wanting to win and how he can continue to help the team, not only in what he does well, but the things that he wants to improve on so that he can help the team. And I think that's admirable, and figuring out the best way to harness that within the team concept. You know, that's part of Rudy's growth, and that's part of our job and as the, with the Jazz to fit a, a well-functioning, high-functioning team together. Well, Jay is a central part. Well, Jay-Z, that is our time. My producer is sweating because I believe he's being texted to say it's time to let Justin go. So, yeah, I don't uh, want to get fi- I don't want to get fined. No, no. Okay. Uh, but I, in the meeting. I've got <laughs> I've got 20 other questions for you, but maybe we'll get to those, I don't know, when the world settles in and we can go grab lunch or something. But in the meantime, look, um, stay safe, be well, and I'm pulling for you guys. You know that you have an asset and an advocate in me. Okay, we'll chat soon. Be, be well, Jay-Z. Appreciate it, Spence. Good luck. Be well. Okay. 